Welcome to today's meeting for Team Columbia. We are here to share information on how we can expand our business to the country of Columbia. Included is a comparison of the Hofstede dimensions, information on the culture, negotiation styles, the current government standing, economic status, foreign direct investment, and currency stability. We will then share three product plans that have good opportunities for success in this venture. The Hofstede Cultural Dimensions Tool compares characteristics of cultures that influence the workplace, environment, structure, and behavior. Key differences compared to our own culture within the United States. Columbia's Power Distance Index is 67. This means that power is concentrated with individuals who are classified as leaders by their group. Group members accept authority with little question and expect that there will be someone who holds a high level of power. Columbia's individualism score of 13. Colombians tend to focus more on collective success within a group as opposed to individual success. These groups may include extended families, social classes, labor groups, or gangs. Columbia's uncertainty avoidance of 80. Colombians go to great lengths to plan and control the future. They are likely to expect detailed plans and policies. Communication and time management in Colombia is very different from the U.S. Colombians use more implicit communication. This means body language and gestures help demonstrate what they want to communicate. It is recommended to learn some of the gestures that Colombians commonly use. Next is the use of indirect negative feedback. When necessary, Colombians will use more direct feedback, but prefer to have a friendly conversation instead of directly stating the negative facts. They prefer to avoid confrontations in the workplace. U.S. communication is more confrontational. It is better to avoid debating at work to prevent uncomfortable situations with the employees in Colombia. Communication must be done in a kind and peaceful way, even if the manager disagrees with the employee's opinion. Colombians have a flexible schedule. Being late is not considered disrespectful or rude. They prioritize and value family time and personal life. It is normal to miss work or be late due to a family-related situation. Meetings could be delayed, and it is an acceptable occurrence. Colombians will not do business with those they do not trust. Our team should expect to spend a significant amount of time discussing non-business related matters to develop that trust with our partners. This process can take several days and even multiple trips. To prepare for this style of negotiation, our team should thrive on adaptability. Time should be allotted in the agenda for getting to know our Colombian counterparts and meetings should be structured loosely to allow for that. Another Colombian negotiation tactic is flexibility and inconsistency. As we talked earlier, it is expected that meetings will start late and will not follow an outlined agenda. Colombians will also deny foreign partners the opportunity to bargain until the last minute, forcing concessions. Finally, we should expect false promises, demands, and concessions during the negotiation proceedings. If Colombians were to feel that a relationship was in jeopardy, they might falsify numbers to avoid damaging relations further. This goes back to the importance of building a relationship and keeping or maintaining that relationship. This issue can be avoided by having a profound knowledge of our partner's abilities, strengths, and weaknesses, and by forming bonds of trust with the Colombians. If the relationship is strong, they will feel less need to resort to fabrication. The government in Colombia is almost a mirror image of the government in the United States. There is a legislative branch, judicial branch, Supreme Court, and executive branch headed by the president of the country. The only difference is that the president can only serve one four-year term and cannot be elected again. The government is under a lot of pressure because of protests in COVID-19. 
There have been protests over police brutality, including some violent protests. Government regulations related to COVID-19 have caused an economic contraction. Unemployment has risen to 21% and is projected to go over 30% by the end of the year. The results have been staggering, and some people live off of $1.25 US dollars per day. This implosion of their economy is critical in our investment decisions. If we intend to market consumer goods within Colombia, we need to proceed with caution and consider consumer purchasing power when determining scale at market entrance. If we are investing in goods that increase economic output, such as agricultural technology, then we would be wise to invest aggressively while interest rates are favorable. The Economic Freedom Index looks at four broad pillars, rule of law, government size, regulatory efficiency, and open markets, with subcategories in each pillar. The comparisons on this graph give a picture of a regulatory environment that is freer than the world average to create business. The Colombian government has historically been able to control their spending. Colombia's metrics are more flexible in terms of regulations on work hours, minimum wages, and changes in employee terms. Colombia's three recent presidents have promoted investment freedom and encouraged foreign direct investment. The regulatory environment in Colombia is generally ami amicable. The business registration process requires approximately 18 days to complete. Construction permitting is significantly more time consuming, requiring upwards of 120 days to resolve. According to the Organization for Economic and Cooperation Development, the cost of trading across borders exceeds the norm by three times and is far higher in Colombia than other Latin American and Caribbean countries. Imports and exports typically require two to three weeks for turnaround. Our corporation would do well to be mindful of Colombia's economic integration agreements. These have resulted in overlapping tariff applications. We may want to consider working with a local specialist to navigate the application process. As of 2019, the Colombian government has taken steps to speed up the customs clearance and inspections process. Studies have determined that it is important to produce business cards that are printed in English on one side with the Spanish translation on the other. The Spanish should be towards the Colombian associate. This is polite and proper business practice. Colombia's trade policies should inform our product import decisions. Products with high tariffs, in some cases over 80%, include dairy products, bovine meat products, rice products, and cars. Items with low tariffs, 0 to 5%, include metals, manufacturing machinery, tools, diamonds, wood, and silicone. Colombia has entered 12 free trade agreements that should be considered when sourcing products. Colombia is very welcoming of foreign direct investment, evidenced by many incentives available to foreign companies. Tax advantages are available for things like registering a business with the Value Added Tax Program, using energy efficient methods of production and for developing rural or agricultural areas in Colombia. That being said, there are some restrictions our company should consider. The sectors of defense, security, and toxic waste are not eligible for FDI. Media and broadcasting, airline, and shipping industries all have ownership limitations. Financial sectors require authorizations and certifications that can only be acquired after residency and experience conditions are satisfied. Colombia's gross national income, GNI, per capita, increased from 2017 through 2019. 2020 data is not yet available to the World Bank. The national GDP has followed the same trend, gross domestic product. Due to a lack of money in circulation, the inflation rate in Colombia is currently at an all-time low. It is projected that Colombia will lose $6.6 .6 billion US dollars in circulation by the end of the year. 
The interest and lending rates are also at an all-time low. Our conclusion is that we play the long game. Depending on the nature of our product offerings, we may not see initial profit because of the lack of cash flow in the country. But as the economy becomes more stable, we expect the flow of cash will turn. The Colombian peso is the official currency of Colombia. Compared to neighboring Latin American countries, the Colombian peso has seen deeper depreciation levels by as much as 1.2%. However, according to one investment and management firm, 2018 saw currency strengthening in large part due to rising petroleum prices. On the heels of better regulation policies and improvements with national security, Colombia's peso is poised to consistently strengthen. In regards to currency, the U.S. dollar buying power is very strong right now in Colombia, having realized a 77% increase over the last six years. Even though currency controls are imposed by the Colombian government and consumer wire transfers require extra steps, our corporation will not be hindered, as shocks in the exchange rate are often temporary. Now here's the big stuff, product ideas. We will now showcase a few product ideas for production and sale in Colombia. Product number one, the polyurethane rubber sandals. In Colombia, as well as many other South American countries, one does not simply wear socks around the house. It is common to wear sandals around the home as well as walking to and from destinations because of the lack of personal vehicles. Since walking and buses are the main types of travel, a comfortable sandal would benefit the health of many in a country where the streets are sometimes unpaved, uneven, and very hard on shoes. Product number two one-piece designer goggle. In recent years, eye health has become a topic of consideration with regards to road safety in Colombia. Motorcycles are a popular mode of transportation, and riders account for over 75% of the traffic-related deaths in Colombia annually. In most cases, riders lack the appropriate safety gear, and impaired vision is attributed to the majority of instances of preventable road accidents. Furthermore, ocular diseases affect large segments of the underprivileged populations who have limited means and access to corrective lenses. Our one-piece designer goggle would enter the market with various design, colors, and prescription needs for consumers at all salary levels. This goggle would attract the underserved through affordability and durability. Product number three, mechanical banana harvester. Another product option, the mechanical banana harvester, is one of Colombia's top exports, the bananas. Though developed and stable, this market has potential for growth. This machine that we hope to manufacture would be specifically for the removal of the banana stalks from the trees. Currently, this task is done manually and requires a significant amount of labor. The machine uses hydraulic arm to remove the bananas and transport them efficiently. We may face cultural backlash regarding this product because it will appear that we are diminishing the unskilled labor job sector. As of 2017, banana plantations employed over 65,000 Colombians. Replacing workers with machines often has an outplacement effect. That being said, the workers that are outplaced from current plants will still be of significant help as corporations expand output and open new banana processing facilities and farms. From a government standpoint, our investment would be welcome as we would be improving agricultural production and developing rural Colombia. So those are the three product options and we hope that you have enjoyed this production of Colombia and why we should be doing business.